Good afternoon and good morning, boys and girls. Today is a really interesting day when we're talking about our nation's government. Rarely can we say that a country has had their constitution or their original form of government for about 230 years like we have in the United States. Today can be broken down into three tasks. Task number one, you're going to do using your textbook, which should be right underneath your basket. It's called Creating America. You're going to go to page 212 and you'll see that page there. I would like you to read those five, six pages. I've created a nice audio clip in quarter one, Constitutional Convention U.S. Government and Creating America Tasks folder. Here is the audio clip right there. Okay, It's going to take you about 11 and a half minutes just to listen to me read it very quickly. So if you're a slower reader, I highly recommend that. Please pause the video and do that now. All right, now that you're back, I would like you to now go up and grab your purple notes guide and watch the continued video lecture on filling these in. Task three is going to be to use that notes page and create your own Google drawing. I'll give you a very quick little tutorial on how to do that again so you'll be good to go. All right. Let's go back to our notes page now that we're here. All right, we're going to start off with talking about Maryland. This image is not at the top, but I'm going to be right up here, and you should see it word for word. By September of 1786, we knew that the AOC did not work because of our five weaknesses, right? Weak government no money, no power to tax, no military, no uh, judicial system, differences between the 13 states, and of course we've got Shays Rebellion. All right, so we know that five states saw a need, led by Alexander Hamilton, to fix the trading problem. States were charging a tax just to bring their stuff across the border and sell it. That is not good. Today, we can freely drive things South Dakota to Wisconsin and vice versa, and there's no penalty or fee. All right, states were placing too high taxes on their goods from other states. The goal of this meeting in Annapolis was to create trade laws to help economies in every single state. All right, it's kind of like NAFTA today between Canada, Mexico, and the United States in the middle. Free trade allows open doors, allows trade to move very freely and um, without restriction. It's good for us because we get cheaper goods. But as you may have heard from Donald Trump, it also can cause countries, or companies rather, to move to Mexico and we lose jobs. So there's pros and cons to that. Um, part C, uh, this would require amending the Articles of Confederation. And remember, we needed unanimous approval from all states in order to pass changes. Part 4, Alexander Hamilton of New York called for representatives in May from all states to meet. On to the next slide here. Several people doubted that the national government needed strengthening. They were very afraid of going back to that monarchy with King George III and losing their power and control. Remember the goal in the convention would eventually be balance liberty on one hand and government control or authority on the other. But we, we have studied that Shays Rebellion changed people's minds. Twelve states saw a direct need right away after Shays Rebellion to send representatives to Philadelphia. We know that Rhode Island refused to send any participants. The convention delegates. Uh, we didn't get into much of this the other day. We know that George Washington was there. We know that Ben Franklin was there. James Madison, the the father of our constitution, try to remember that. Um, and mainly it was wealthy white males that were there. Thomas Jefferson, John Adams were overseas in, in Europe doing some domestic and foreign relations. Um, but there were 55 delegates that were there. Off and on, people would leave because it was over five summer months. They would have family needs or business needs that they would have to attend to. So the average was only about 30 attendees, but 55 were there um, is just kind of a general number. 
Half of them were lawyers. The others were rich planters, merchants, and doctors. Um, there were no Native Americans, no African Americans, and of course, no women. They weren't considered as citizens. Um, you had to be a male and you had to own property. That was the big thing. Back in 1776, many Americans believed government was the main threat to people's rights. This is why we established the um, Articles of Confederation and we found out we had five weaknesses and Shays Rebellion would come in and kind of break that up. In 1787, though, people began to realize that people often came into conflict and needed government to maintain order. We learned that when we studied Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, and Montesquieu, that a state of nature is pretty tough to live and survive by. So, stronger government allows for protection. We learned that. The challenge, again, would be to set up a strong yet limited federal government so that there wasn't too much power um, in control of most of the people and in the states. All right, designing a new government. There were two plans. Uh, you will later make a Google drawing of this, but essentially the old Dominion state, there's a new little fact, or Virginia plan was made by Edmund Randolph. He proposed that it has three branches of government and we know them as the judicial, executive, and legislative. So, the legislative made the laws. The executive enforced the laws. This is the president, this is the police officers, etc., the people that up, you know, hold people accountable for following the laws. And the third is the judicial, which interprets the laws. That means they look at it and decide if it's constitutional or not. If it is deemed unconstitutional, then they got to change it or get rid of the law altogether. So, under the Virginia plan, uh, they decided that it was important to have two houses, and the number of representatives in both houses would be based on state's population. So I'm going to highlight this, this really important point here. Okay? Or it's wealth. Who supported the Virginia plan? It was mainly the large states, the New Yorks, the Pennsylvanias, the Virginias, the Georgias. The smaller states did not like this because, of course, less space, smaller population, etc. It should make sense. So again, why did the larger states like this? They had a bigger population. The small states, they hated it. They feared that the larger states would end up ruling or controlling the smaller ones, and it just would be unfair. So in response to this, New Jersey comes up with a plan. William Patterson proposed legislation um, that would form a legislature with one house. Each state under this system would have one vote. One vote. All right. This would provide equal protection. Now we're going to get into more equal protection of the law and all that good stuff later on. But equality was a big thing for the smaller states. Uh, <clears throat> the Virginia plan was the one that actually won. It received the most votes and that was the framework for our Constitution. Arguing over representation would follow, you know, who would count towards um, representatives in Congress etc. Uh, committee gathered and created a compromise and here's where the Great Compromise comes into play. The Great Compromise was also known as the Connecticut Compromise, small New England state. Each state in this compromise, the Great Compromise, which would be what we have and follow today, would have an equal number of votes in the Senate and that would be two. This is why, boys and girls, that every state, all 50, have two votes or two senators today and that's why we have a hundred all right representation in the house of representatives again to compromise would follow the virginia plan would be based on your state's population so we know that wisconsin has 10 electoral votes a population of about 5 million people california has about 33 million people living there they have 55 electoral votes of course, that includes the two senators that each state has. So, we can see the mix on our electoral map this year 
and in many years. And it's kind of neat to kind of see and build that picture now. Another thing that would be talked about was slavery. How would our constitution deal with slavery? A lot of the population in the North was not reliant on slavery. In fact, not many slaves lived there. But in the South, we had a different picture. In some areas, there would be upwards of 10, 6, 7, 8 times the number of white people living on a community or a plantation. And the Southern people wanted to make sure that they factored into their representation. But there's two sides to the story. So let's see what we got here. Population, we know, would determine your House of Representatives, your, your, uh, that part of Congress, not the Senate. So we had to decide who would count in a state's population. Northerners, remember, had no slaves, no need. They were subsistence farming, and they worked in factories. They did not rely on growing food and crops all year round. But the Southerners had lots of slaves to grow their indigo, their rice, and their cotton, and they wanted them to count towards the population, but not for taxation. All right? Nobody wants to pay a lot of taxes, so we can kind of clearly see why the South was not in favor of that counting towards taxation, but they did want it for representation. So what's the argument? Northerners thought slaves were not citizens and should not be counted for representation, but that they should count for taxation, but count for taxation. So you might want to circle that too. All right, our last piece here, the three-fifths compromise. Both sides finally reached an agreement. Three-fifths of the slave population would be counted in when setting up direct taxation. And uh, they would also be used, three-fifths of the slave population would also be used to determine the legislature or the House of Representatives. Okay? Another heated debate soon followed this, um, occurring over slave trade. Okay? And the northern states, remember, and several southern states, they didn't necessarily think slavery was okay all the time. So some of them in the South even banned the importation or the bringing in of slaves for sale. Now we understand why the North was against it, but there were some places in the South that also were thinking, you know what, this might not be a great thing to do. With that said, we see our nice little picture here down at the bottom which shows you the three-fifths compromise. These people right here are considered white. They would all count towards representation. And down here would be the slaves, only three of the five counting towards representation. All right, that wraps up our purple notes page. You should have front and back now completed. What I'd like you to do now is go into Google. Okay, you'd go to your Google Drive, just like I'm doing now and into your social studies folder just like I'm doing and you want to create a new Google drawing okay the best way I think to do this is to obviously label or title your Google drawing so I would call this my um, VA slash NJ plan and three-fifths compromise okay I'm just going to point this out to you quick. All of our tools are right up here. We can draw our shapes. We can draw arrows or for flow charts. Okay. And this should help you out in building three tools. Please be sure that you're putting the Virginia plan, New Jersey plan, and three-fifths compromise here, and possibly using a few arrows to show some flow to this. Okay? I wish you good luck. If you have any questions, please see me up at the front. I'm glad to help out in any way that I can. All right? Good luck. You'll do great.